Malaysia Airlines Flight 17, MH17 MAS 17, was a scheduled passenger flight from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur that was shot down on July 17, 2014, while flying over eastern Ukraine, killing all 283 passengers and 15 crew on board. Contact with the aircraft, a Boeing 777-200ER, was lost about 50 kilometers, 31 miles, from the Ukraine-Russia border and wreckage of the aircraft landed near Torres in Donetsk Oblast, Ukraine, 40 kilometers, 25 miles, from the border. The crash occurred in an area controlled by the Donbass People's Militia during the battle in Shukhtarsk Rayon, part of the ongoing war in Donbass. The crash is the deadliest airliner shootdown, eighth deadliest aviation disaster, and was Malaysia Airlines' second aircraft loss during 2014 after the disappearance of Flight 370 on March 8. In October 2015, the Dutch Safety Board, DSB, concluded that the airliner was downed by a Buk surface to air missile, NATO reporting name, SA 11 Gadfly launched from pro-Russian separatist-controlled territory in Ukraine. In September 2016, the Dutch-led Joint Investigation Team, JIT, confirmed the missile type which had downed the aircraft and said that the Buk missile system had been transported from Russia on the day of the crash, fired from a field in a rebel-controlled area and returned to Russia after the Buk was used to shoot down MH17. The JIT had established the identities of approximately 100 people, witnesses, or suspects, who were linked to the transporting of the book, but said that their evidence must stand before a court. The DSB and JIT findings confirmed earlier claims by American and German intelligence sources and the Ukrainian government as to the missile type and launch area. In 2014, Ukraine and U.S. intelligence had also said that Russia had supplied the Buk missile to pro-Russian insurgents, who had mistakenly shot down the aircraft. Also in 2014, German intelligence sources reported that they believed insurgents had stolen the missile from the Ukrainian military. Russian government sources initially claimed that the aircraft was being followed by a Ukrainian military jet at the time of the shootdown and later that Ukraine was responsible since the crash had happened in Ukrainian airspace. Several theories about the crash have since appeared in Russian media, and as of September 2016, the Russian government continues to deny responsibility for the crash. Immediately after the crash, a post appeared on the v social media profile attributed to Russian Colonel Igor Gurkin, leader of the Donbass separatist militia, claiming responsibility for shooting down an N-26 near Torres, but later the same day the separatists denied involvement and the post was removed. In late July 2014, communications intercepts were made public in which, it is claimed, Separatists are heard discussing an aircraft that they had downed and later, their realization that it was a civilian aircraft. Between November 2014 and May 2016, UK-based investigative collective Bellingcat made a series of conclusions, based on their examination of photos in social media and other open-source information. Bellingcat said that the launcher used to shoot down the aircraft was Buk-332 of the Russian 53rd Anti-Aircraft Rocket Brigade based in Kursk, Russia, which had been transported from Donetsk to Snizny and was controlled by separatists in Ukraine on the day of the attack. In July 2015, Malaysia proposed that the United Nations Security Council set up an international tribunal to prosecute those deemed responsible for the downing of the plane. The Malaysian resolution gained a majority on the Security Council, but was vetoed by Russia. Aircraft Flight 17 was operated with a Boeing 777-2H6ER, serial number 28411, registration 9MMRD30 The 84th Boeing 777 produced, it first flew on July 17, 1997 exactly 17 years before the incident, 
and was delivered new to Malaysia Airlines on July 29, 1997. Powered by two Rolls-Royce Trent 892 engines and carrying 280 seats, 33 business and 247 economy, the aircraft had recorded more than 76,300 hours in 11,430 cycles before the crash 30 the aircraft was in an airworthy condition at departure 31. The Boeing 777, which entered commercial service on June 7, 1995, has one of the best safety records in commercial aircraft. In June 2014 there were about 1,212 aircraft in service, with 340 more on order. Passengers and Crew The incident is the deadliest airliner shootdown incident to date. All 283 passengers and 15 crew died 27 by July 19, the airline had determined the nationalities of all 298 passengers and crew. The crew were all Malaysian, while over two-thirds, 68%, of the passengers were Dutch. Most of the other passengers were Malaysians and Australians, with the few more citizens from seven other countries 27. Among the passengers were delegates en route to the 20th International AIDS Conference in Melbourne, including Joe Plang, a former president of the International AIDS Society, which organized the conference. Many initial reports had erroneously indicated that around 100 delegates to the conference were aboard, but this was later revised to six. Also on board were Dutch Senator Willem Witveen, Australian author Liam Davison, and Malaysian actress Shuba J. At least 20 family groups were on board the aircraft, and 80 of the passengers were under the age of 18. The flight had two captains. Wan Amran Wan Hussan from Kuala Kangsar and Eugene Chu Jin Leong from Seremban, and two co-pilots, Ahmed Hakimi Hanapai and Mud Firdaz Abdul Rahim. Background Some airlines started to avoid eastern Ukrainian airspace in early March 2014 due to the Crimean crisis. In April, the International Civil Aviation Organization warned governments that there was a risk to commercial passenger flights over southeastern Ukraine. 217 The American Federal Aviation Administration issued restrictions on flights over Crimea, to the south of MH-17's route, and advised airlines flying over some other parts of Ukraine to exercise extreme caution. This warning did not include the MH-17 crash region. 37 airlines continued overflying eastern Ukraine and about 900 flights crossed the Donetsk region in the seven days before the Boeing 777 was shot down, with Aeroflot, Singapore Airlines, Ukraine International Airlines, Lufthansa and Malaysia Airlines being the most active carriers. On June 14, 2014, a Ukrainian Air Force Ilyushin Il-76 aircraft was shot down on approach to Luhansk International Airport, all 49 people on board died 183 on June 29, Russian news agencies reported that insurgents had obtained a Buk missile system after having taken control of a Ukrainian air defense base, possibly the former location of the 156th Anti-Aircraft Rocket Regiment. On the same day, the Donetsk People's Republic claimed possession of such a system in a since-deleted tweet. On July 14, 2014, a Ukrainian Air Force and 26 transport plane flying at 6,500 m, 21,300 feet, was shot down 183 militia reportedly claimed via social media that a Buk missile launcher had been used to bring down the aircraft. American officials later said evidence suggested the aircraft had been shot down from Russian territory. On July 16, a Sukhoi Su-25 close air support aircraft was also shot down. The Ukrainian government said the Russian military had shot down the aircraft with an air-to-air -air missile fired by a MiG-29 jet in Russia, a spokesman for the Russian Defense Ministry rejected that report as absurd. According to the Dutch newspaper De Telegraaf, 
the Ukrainian government also warned the government of Netherlands and other European countries about dangers in flying over the East Ukraine three days prior to the tragedy due to the downing of the N-26 transport aircraft on July 14. On July 15, 2014, following his visit to Kiev, Polish Minister of Foreign Affairs Radoslaw Sikorsky warned about the dangers posed by the continued Russian military support for pro-Russian separatists, especially ground-to-air missiles. On July 17, an Associated Press journalist saw a book launcher in Snizny, a town in Donetsk Oblast, 16 kilometers, 10 miles, southeast of the crash site. The reporter also saw seven separatist tanks near the town. Associated Press journalists reported that the Buk M1 was operated by a man with unfamiliar fatigues and a distinctive Russian accent escorted by two civilian vehicles. The battle around Sor Mojula has been suggested as the possible context within which the missile that brought down MH17 was fired as separatists deployed increasingly sophisticated anti-aircraft weaponry in this battle, and had brought down several Ukrainian jets in July. A Ukrainian N-26 was scheduled to deliver paratroopers to the battle arena on July 17 and, according to Russian expert Vadim Lukashevich, the separatists might have been waiting just for them. According to the final report of the Dutch Safety Board, no N-26 was downed in eastern Ukraine that day 182. On June 5, 2014 the airspace above Donetsk Oblast was closed by Ukraine below 26,000 feet, 7,900 m, and on July 14 that below 32,000 feet, 9,800 m, was closed 179-180 a few hours before the tragedy the Russian ATC issued notum U of 6158-14 which closed the Russian airspace in the adjacent area below 53,000 feet, 16,000 m, FL530. The reason given was armed conflict in Ukraine, but such a high altitude was not justified by previous incidents and was comparable with the 18,000 m. 59,055 feet, range of the Buk missile. The Dutch Safety Board asked Russian ATC for further explanation but did not receive any clarity on the meaning of the restriction to FL530 as with other countries, Ukraine receives overflight fees for commercial aircraft that fly through their borders and this may have contributed to the continued availability of civilian flight paths through the conflict zone. Crash On Thursday, July 17, 2014, Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 departed from Amsterdam Airport Schiphol Gate G3 at 12.13 CEST, 10.13 UTC 23 and took off at 12.31 local time, 10.31 UTC. It was due to arrive at Kuala Lumpur International Airport at 6.10 MYT, Friday, July 18, 22.10 UTC, July 17. According to the original flight plan, MH17 was to fly over Ukraine at flight level 330, 33,000 feet or 10,060 meters, and then change to FL350 around Dnipropetrovsk. When it reached the area as planned, at 1553 local time, 1253 UTC, Dnipropetrovsk Air Control, Dnipro Control, asked MH17 if they could climb to FL350 as planned, and also to avoid a potential separation conflict with another flight, Singapore Airlines Flight 351, also at FL330. The crew asked to remain at FL330 and the air control approved this request, moving the other flight to FL350. At 1600 hours local time, 1300 hours UTC, the crew asked for a deviation of 20 nautical miles, 37 kilometers, to the left, north, of course, on airway L980, due to weather conditions. This request was also approved by Dnipro Control. The crew then asked if they could climb to FL340, which was rejected as this flight level was not available so MH17 remained at FL330. At 16.19 local time, 
1319 UTC, Dnipro Control noticed that the flight was 3.6 nautical miles, 6.7 kilometers, north from the center line of approved track and instructed MH17 to return to the track. At 1619 local time, 1319 UTC, Dnipro Control contacted Russian Air Control in Rostov on Don, RND, over telephone and requested clearance for transferring the flight to Russian Air Control. After obtaining the permission, Dnipro Control attempted to hand off the aircraft to Rostov on Don at 16:20 local time, 13:20 UTC, but the aircraft did not respond. When MH17 did not respond to several calls, Dnipro Control contacted RND again to check if they could see the Boeing on their radar. RND confirmed that the plane had disappeared. The Dutch Safety Board reported a last flight data recording at 16:20 local time, 13:20 UTC, located west of the urban type settlement Rossipni, heading 115 degrees at 494 knots, 915 kilometers per hour. The aircraft crashed outside Hrabov, near Torres in eastern Ukraine's Donetsk Oblast, with debris spread over a 50 square kilometers, 19 square miles, area to the southwest of Hrabov 53. The fireball on impact is believed to have been captured on video. Photographs from the site of the crash show scattered pieces of broken fuselage and engine parts, bodies, and passports. Some of the wreckage fell close to houses. Dozens of bodies fell into crop fields, and some fell into houses. Three other commercial aircraft were in the same area when the Malaysian plane crashed, a Singapore Airlines Boeing 777 en route from Copenhagen to Singapore, an Air India Flight 113, a Boeing 787 en route from Delhi to Birmingham. The closest aircraft was 33 kilometers, 21 miles, away 41. Recovery of Bodies A Ukraine Foreign Ministry representative said that the bodies found at the crash site would be taken to Kharkiv for identification, 270 kilometers, 170 miles, to the north. By the day after the crash, 181 of the 298 bodies had been found, some were observed being placed in body bags, and loaded onto lorries. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte complained about the lack of respect shown to the personal belongings of the dead which were reportedly being looted. He initially announced his disgust about the handling of the bodies that were reportedly being dragged around and thrown, but later stated they had been handled with more care than originally thought. On July 20, Ukrainian emergency workers, observed by armed separatists, began loading the remains of the passengers of MH17 into refrigerated railway wagons for transport and identification. On July 21, pro-Russian rebels allowed Dutch investigators to examine the bodies. By this time, according to Ukrainian officials 272 bodies had been recovered. Remains left Torres on a train on the evening of July 21 en route to Kharkiv to be flown to the Netherlands for identification. On the same day, Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak announced that the Malaysian government had reached a tentative agreement to retrieve the remains of the Malaysians who died in the crash, following any necessary forensic work. It was reported on July 21 that with 282 bodies and 87 body fragments found, there were still 16 bodies missing. An agreement had been reached that the Netherlands would coordinate the identification effort. A train carrying the bodies arrived at the Malashev factory, Kharkiv on July 22. Dutch authorities stated that they found 200 bodies on the train when it arrived at Kharkiv, leaving almost 100 unaccounted for. In late July, the UK Metropolitan Police sent specialist officers to Ukraine to assist with the recovery, identification, and repatriation of bodies. The first remains were flown to Eindhoven in the Netherlands on July 23, moved there with Dutch Air Force C-130 and Australian C-17 transport aircraft, which landed at Eindhoven Airport just before 1600 hours local time. 
The day after, another 74 bodies arrived. The examination and identification of the bodies was conducted at the Netherlands Army Medical Regiment Training Facility in Hilversum and was coordinated by a Dutch forensic team. On August 1 it was announced that a search and recovery mission, including about 80 forensic police specialists from the Netherlands, Malaysia and Australia, and led by Colonel Cornelis Kouagis of the Royal Mare Chaussee, would use drones, sniffer dogs, divers and satellite mapping to search for missing body parts at the crash site. Australian officials had believed that as many as 80 bodies were still at the site, but after some days of searching the international team had found remains of only a few victims and concluded that the recovery effort undertaken by local authorities immediately after the crash was more thorough than initially thought. On August 6 the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte announced that the recovery operation would be temporarily halted due to an upsurge in fighting around the crash site threatening the safety of crash investigators and recovery specialists, and that all international investigators and humanitarian forces conducting searches would leave the country leaving behind a small communications and liaison team. On August 22 the bodies of 20 Malaysians, of 43 killed in the incident, arrived in Malaysia. The government announced a national mourning day, with the ceremony broadcast live on radio and television. On October 9 a spokesman for the Dutch National Prosecutor's Office stated that one victim had been found with an oxygen mask around his neck, a forensic investigation of the mask for fingerprints, saliva and DNA did not produce any results and it is therefore not known how or when that mask got around the neck of the victim 99. By December 5, 2014, the Dutch-led forensic team had identified the bodies of 292 out of 298 victims of the crash. In February and April 2015 new remains were found on the site, by then two victims, both Dutch citizens, had not been identified. Aftermath About 90 minutes after the incident, Ukraine closed all routes in eastern Ukrainian airspace, at all altitudes 101 the incident dramatically heightened fears about airliner shootdowns, leading to some airlines announcing they would avoid overflying conflict zones. On July 19 the biggest newspaper in the Netherlands, De Telegraaf, published a front-page photo collage of pro-Russian rebel leaders, including Igor Gurkin, under the one-word headline murderers, Murdenars. It was suggested on other media that credit and debit cards may have been looted from the bodies of the victims, and the Dutch Banking Association said it would take preventative measures against any possible fraud. There were also accusations that other possessions had been removed and that evidence at the crash site had been destroyed. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte acknowledged on August 6 that early reports of chaos and criminality around the site may have been exaggerated. One eyewitness observed that valuable items like shoes and bottles of alcohol were untouched in the wreckage, while a video published by News Corp Australia in July 2015 recorded at the scene shortly after the crash shows militants described as Russian-backed rebels arriving and ransacking the wreckage. Shortly after the crash, it was announced that Malaysia Airlines would retire flight number MH17 and change the Amsterdam Kuala Lumpur route to flight number MH19 beginning on July 25, 2014, with the outbound flight unchanged. In association with the retirement of the Boeing 777 aircraft type from Malaysia Airlines fleet, Malaysia Airlines terminated service to Amsterdam opting to code share with KLM on the Kul AMS route for service beyond January 25, 2016. On July 18, 2014, shares in Malaysia Airlines dropped by nearly 16%. On July 23, 2014, two Ukrainian military jets were hit by missiles at the altitude of 17,000 feet, 5,200 m close to the area of the MH17 crash. According to the Ukrainian Security Council, preliminary information indicated that the missiles came from Russia. On June 9, 2016, 
a Russian businessman claimed that the shooting down of the plane put an end to hopes of a Russian nation in Ukraine and prolonged the war in Donbass. Investigation Two parallel investigations were led by the Dutch, one into the technical cause of the crash, and a separate criminal inquiry. The technical report was released on October 13, 2015, while the criminal investigation reported some of their findings in September 2016. According to the Convention on International Civil Aviation, the country in which an aviation incident occurs is responsible for the investigation, but that country may delegate the investigation to another state, Ukraine has delegated the leadership of both investigations to the Netherlands. On-site investigation In the hours following the crash, a meeting was convened of the Trilateral Contact Group. After they had held a video conference with representatives of insurgents affiliated with the Donetsk People's Republic, who controlled the area where the aircraft crashed, the rebels promised to provide safe access and security guarantees to the National Investigation Commission by co-operating with Ukrainian authorities and OSCE monitors. During the first two days of investigation, the militants prevented the OSCE and the workers of Ukrainian Emergencies Ministry from freely working at the crash site. Andrei Pergin, a leader of the Donetsk People's Republic, declared later that we will guarantee the safety of international experts on the scene as soon as Kiev concludes a ceasefire agreement. By July 18, 2014, the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder had been recovered by separatists, and three days later were handed over to Malaysian officials in Donetsk 44 the CVR was damaged but there was no evidence that data had been tampered with 45. The National Bureau of Air Accidents Investigation of Ukraine, which led off an on-site investigation during the first days after the crash, had by August 2014 delegated the investigation to the DSB because of the large number of Dutch passengers and the flight having originated in Amsterdam. On July 22, 2014, a Malaysian team of 133 officials, search and recovery personnel, and forensics, technical and medical experts arrived in Ukraine. Also Australia sent a 45-member panel headed by former Air Chief Marshal Angus Houston, who had earlier supervised the MH370 probe. Approximately 200 Special Forces soldiers from Australia were also deployed to provide support for the JIT investigators. The United Kingdom sent six investigators from the Air Accidents Investigation Branch, AAIB, and the UK Foreign Office sent extra consular staff to Ukraine. It took until late July before the full international team could start working at the crash site, under the leadership of the Dutch Ministry of Defence. On July 30, 2014, a Ukrainian representative said that pro-Russian rebels had mined approaches to the crash site and moved heavy artillery. On August 6, 2014, the experts left the crash site due to concerns about their safety. In mid-September they unsuccessfully attempted to regain access to the site. On October 13, 2014, a Dutch-Ukrainian team resumed recovery of victims' personal belongings. In mid-November 2014, work was undertaken to remove part of the wreckage from the crash site. Earlier efforts by the recovery team to salvage the MH17 wreckage had been frustrated by disagreements with the local rebels. The recovery operation took one week to complete. The debris was transported to the Netherlands where investigators reconstructed parts of the plane. In August 2015, Possible Buk missile launcher parts were found at the crash site by the Dutch-led Joint Investigation Team. Cause of Crash Soon after the crash both American and Ukrainian officials said that a 9M38 series surface-to-air missile strike was the most likely cause, and if so, then the missile was fired from a mobile Soviet-designed Buk missile system, NATO reporting name, SA-11 Gadfly as this was the only surface-to-air missile system in the region capable of reaching the altitude of commercial air traffic. According to defense analyst Reed Foster, 
from Jane's information group, the contour of the aluminium and the blistering of the paint around many of the holes on the aircraft fragments indicate that small, high-velocity fragments entered the aircraft externally, a damage pattern indicative of an SA-11. Ballistics specialist Stefan Fruling of the Australian National University's Strategic and Defence Studies Centre concurred with this, explaining that since it struck the cockpit rather than an engine it was probably a radar-guided, rather than heat-seeking, missile equipped with a proximity-fused warhead such as an SA-11. Shortly after the crash, Igor Gurkin, leader of the Donbass separatists, was reported to have posted on social media network v Contacti, taking credit for downing a Ukrainian in 26. This news was repeated by channels in Russia, with Life News reporting a new victory of Donetsk self-defense who shot down yet another Ukrainian airplane. The separatists later denied involvement, saying they did not have the equipment or training to hit a target at that altitude. Russian media also reported that Alexander Boraday called one of the Moscow media managers 40 minutes after the crash, saying that likely we shot down a civilian airliner. Witnesses in Torres reported sightings on the day of the incident of what appeared to be a Buk missile launcher, and AP journalists reported sightings of a Buk system in separatist-controlled Snizny. The witness reports backed up photographs and videos which had been posted online, of the Buk launcher in rebel-held territory. On July 19, 2014, Vitaly Nada, the chief of the counter-intelligence department of the Security Service of Ukraine, SBU, told a news conference, We have compelling evidence that this terrorist act was committed with the help of the Russian Federation. We know clearly that the crew of this system were Russian citizens. He cited what he said were recorded conversations in which separatists expressed satisfaction to Russian intelligence agents that they brought down an aircraft. While one of the involved persons acknowledged that these conversations took place, the separatists denied that they were related to the crash of MH17 and blamed the Ukrainian government for shooting it down. According to NATO, a Buk launcher used in the shootdown was moved back into Russia the night after the attack. The SBU released another recording, which they said was of pro-Russian separatist leader Igor Bisler being told of an approaching aircraft two minutes before MH17 was shot down. Bisler said the recording was real, but referred to a different incident. The head of the SBU, Valentin Nalavayachenko, later concluded that rebels intended to shoot down a Russian airliner in a false flag operation to give Russia a pretext to invade Ukraine but shot down MH17 by mistake. Journalists from the Associated Press in Snizny, Ukraine reported seeing a Buk M1 enter the town operated by a man with unfamiliar fatigues and a distinctive Russian accent escorted by two civilian vehicles, which then moved off in the direction where the shootdown later occurred. According to Ukrainian counterterrorism chief, Vitaly Nada, after downing the plane under separatist direction, the launcher's Russian crew quickly moved it back across the border into Russia. On July 22, 2014, a rebel fighter revealed to an Italian reporter that fellow separatists had told his unit the aircraft had been shot down under the assumption that it was Ukrainian. This information was verified and confirmed on the same day by a German newspaper. Unnamed American intelligence officials stated that sensors that traced the path of the missile, Shrapnel patterns in the wreckage, voice print analysis of separatists' conversations in which they claimed credit for the strike, and photos and other data from social media sites all indicated that Russian backed separatists had fired the missile. American officials said that satellite data from infrared sensors detected the explosion of flight MH17. American intelligence agencies said that analysis of the launch plume and trajectory suggested the missile was fired from an area near Torres and Snizny. The British Daily Telegraph said, The Telegraph's own inquiries suggest the missile, an SA-11 from a Buk mobile rocket launcher, was possibly fired from a cornfield about 19 kilometers, 12 miles, to the south of the epicenter of the crash site. 
Other sources suggest the missile was launched from the separatist-controlled town of Chernikino. Several other media outlets including The Guardian, The Washington Post and The Sydney Morning Herald reported that the aeroplane is believed to have been downed by a rebel-fired missile. An unnamed American intelligence official stated that Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 may have been shot down in error by pro-Russian separatists citing evidence that separatists launched an SA-11 surface-to-air missile that blew up the Malaysian airliner. They said it was possible the rebel was a former member of the armed forces of Ukraine who had defected to the pro-Russian separatists. The official dismissed Russian allegations that MH-17 took evasive action and said the claim that the Ukrainian government had shot down MH-17 was not realistic, as Kiev had no such missile systems in that area which was rebel-controlled. American intelligence officials also said that Russia was attempting to disguise the flow of weaponry it was delivering to the rebels by sending older weapons that matched Ukraine's inventory. The British Foreign Office stated that it was highly likely that the missile was fired from an area controlled by Russian-backed separatists. The Russian Ministry of Defense has maintained that American claims of separatist responsibility were unfounded and said that the American intelligence agencies have not released any of the data on which they based their conclusions. According to the Russian military, in what the New York magazine called Russia's conspiracy theory, MH-17 was shot down by the Ukrainians, using either a surface-to-air missile or a fighter plane. On July 21, 2014, the Russian Ministry of Defense held a press conference and said that while the Boeing 777 was crashing, a Ukrainian Su-25 ground attack aircraft approached to within 3 to 5 kilometers, 1.9 to 3.1 miles, of the Malaysian airliner. The MOD also claimed that satellite photographs showed that the Ukrainian army moved a Buksam battery to the area close to the territory controlled by the rebels on the morning of July 17, hours before the crash. They said the installation was the. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.